The Kraken is perhaps the largest legendary monster known to man. In Nordic folklore, it was set to stalk the seas from Norway all the way to Greenland. Now, none of the legends ever mentioned how the Kraken gives birth, but maybe this next video can provide the proof. In October 2019, a team of divers sets off to explore a sunken World War II ship off the Norwegian coast. Instead, they see this. The footage shows the team in a close encounter with a huge, drifting, gelatinous blob. The video is played all over the world, and it's not lost on people that these are the exact waters the dreaded legendary sea monster called the Kraken was known to inhabit. Look at it up close. The giant floating orb is as big as a person, and when the divers turn their flashlights on it, it appears as if the sphere is filled with hundreds of thousands of tiny creatures. Also inside, is an orange mass. Some speculate that this is a tentacle. Captain Nils Bodnes says he's never seen anything like it in 25 years at sea. We didn't know what it was, and uh, as we were swimming closer, it, uh, it was actually bigger and bigger. It was like an alien thing in the water. Field researcher Ken Gerhardt speculates whether this orb could actually be the spawn of the Kraken. So the legend of the Kraken is probably one of the most celebrated sea monsters of all time. Based on its physical descriptions, the multiple arms, the massive size, and just the reputation for being very malevolent and snatching sailors off of ships. Legends say that the Kraken could devour a ship's entire crew at once. But despite its fearsome reputation, the monster also seemingly had its benefits. It allegedly swam accompanied by huge schools of fish. Brave fishermen could risk going near the beast to secure a bountiful catch. Unfortunately, Captain Bodna said his team didn't have much air left in their scuba tanks, so they could only document this encounter for a few minutes. But our experts had plenty of time. Let's see what they have to say. Our video forensics expert, Michael Primo, examines the footage to determine if it's too good to be real. The way that the light bounces and off and through this object helped us to authenticate this frame by frame. So at this spot, we can see, again, translucent behavior of the subject behind the object and then some sort of shadowing from his reflection. So I'm leaning more toward that this object was real. So if it's not a hoax, what is it? Marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger weighs in. It could be a jelly or cnidarian, which is a stinging animal. However, sea jellies have really distinct organelles and stinging cells and anatomies. This doesn't have any really defined and clear organs. But apparently, there are other deep sea organisms that look like gelatinous blobs. Maybe it's some really large form of a hooded nudibranch. Conger says nudibranchs are sea slugs that secrete a sweet smell, often compared to watermelon, for defense purposes. But they are typically only about four inches long. So if it's too blobby to be a jellyfish and too large to be a nudibranch, what's left? Could it be an embryo from the legendary kraken? Maybe, in a way. The kraken was an exaggerated version of an animal we now know to be real. We really can attribute historical sightings of the kraken to known squid species today, like the giant and colossal squid. I wouldn't say it's out of the frame of possibility. In fact, we've seen live and dead versions of both species dating back to 1853. And it's believed they can grow to nearly 60 feet. So maybe it is a kraken egg, but not so fast. After a DNA analysis of the mass, scientists are issuing a new opinion. It was determined that this was actually the egg casing of a short fin squid. That's really cool because this object appears to be extremely large, but in reality, it was the egg case of an animal that's only about a foot long. So it's possible that such a small organism can lay such a huge egg casing because it's just full of water. The lesson here is that in the ocean, small things can come in large packages. So our verdict, this is the egg sac of a short fin squid. But what about that orangey mass in the center? 
Scientists believe it's probably ink from the female squid who injected it while making the sphere. It's March 21st, 2022, Maroochydore Beach, 60 miles outside of Brisbane, Australia. Alex Tan is strolling along the coast when he stumbles across something unusual. He takes out his camera and records this. I honestly don't know what it is. An odd-looking creature, which appears to be deceased, lying in the sand. Let's take a closer look. It sure doesn't look like it came from the sea, more like something out of an H.G. Wells novel with its dog-like body and rodent-like head. So I'm trying to figure out what it was and had the color of, you know, like a chicken nugget. It was just weird. It really just threw me off. I was just so fascinated at what I'd found. Author and journalist Aaron McCarthy says that when the video first went viral, thousands of social media users suggested this could be a bunyip. Sure, it could, but what's a bunyip? A bunyip, which is actually a creature from indigenous Australian folklore that it said loves to eat people, specifically women and children. It's a creature that lives in water holes, lakes, and rivers around Australia. It's been said to look like a seal or sometimes a swimming dog. The word bunyip actually first appeared in print in the 1840s when some discovered fossils that were theorized to be a bunyip. There was actually what was said to be a bunyip skull displayed in the Australian Museum in Sydney for a couple of days in the 1840s. McCarthy also wonders if this creature's odd appearance could be explained by some sort of mutation caused by nuclear testing. Some have actually speculated that this creature is a mutated wallaby. Between the early 1950s and the early 1960s, the British government performed nuclear tests at three sites across Australia, Emu Island, Maralinga, and the Montebello Islands. There were 12 major tests performed at these sites, and some of the weapons that were detonated were actually as big as the bombs used during Hiroshima. Those particles have caused a lot of problems for the wildlife that live in those areas. One other thought. There's also a biosecurity sciences lab located in nearby Brisbane. Could this thing have been the subject of some secret medical experiment and somehow gotten loose? This show is no stranger to odd beach carcasses. One of our first segments focused on this strange creature found in South Carolina. Some said it had escaped from a nearby off-limits island where thousands of monkeys are bred for research. Could something similar have happened here? Or perhaps this is the legendary bunyip, or some new undiscovered species from Australia's vast outback. Let's let our experts see what's up down under. We begin with forensic video analyst Michael Primo to see if this video could have been altered. We were able to confirm that these four recordings came from an Apple iPhone there were no programs that interacted with these files and changed the evidence in, in any way digitally. If the video hasn't been altered, what could we be seeing here? We turn to marine biologist Dr. Shay Conger to test the popular online theory that this is a bunyip. It looks like a mammal to me, but there's not a lot of definable features. The bunyip is said to be kind of a aquatic animal, and what I see here looks to be a really typical quadrupedal animal. So I think because of this fact, it's very unlikely to say that this is a bunyip. But if it's not a bunyip, what could it be? Wildlife biologist Stephanie Shuttler takes a look to see if this could be the result of radioactive experiments in the area. Radiation can damage DNA cells, and anytime there is damage to DNA during replication process, this creates mutations. Usually from radiation, the DNA makes mistakes in replication and just keeps replicating cells in their tumor cells. Damage caused by radiation, like in the Chernobyl disaster, usually leads to side effects like cancer or radiation sickness, which can cause hair loss. But Shuttler has another theory that explains why this creature is hairless. You can tell the tide is going down. So it's very likely that this creature has been in the water for a long time in the ocean. And when they're exposed to the ocean water and the sun's rays, it can cause the fur to come off as part of the decomposition process. So what about the wallaby theory, a creature known to be widespread down under? Wallabies are, are similar to kangaroos, but I don't see evidence that it's a wallaby. If it were a wallaby, you would have more powerful hind legs. They would be longer in comparison to the, the forearms. And in this case, they seem to be pretty equal. It looks more like an animal that walks on all fours rather than hops like a wallaby would. 
So if it's not a wallaby, what are we looking at here? Australia has lots of possum species. I think it's the brush tail possum. The limbs are similar in length. Opossums have naked tails. They don't really have any fur in their tails. Our verdict, this is a brush-tailed possum in the stages of decomposition. It's missing its hair because it's been in the ocean. And the head looks strange because predators will often chew the skin off a possum's head and leave the skull. 2019, on a fishing boat in the North Atlantic, fishermen catch something in their nets. But rather than releasing their find, the seamen document something truly astounding. A large fish head reminiscent of the creature from the Black Lagoon has been separated from its body. It looks slimy to the touch with huge unblinking eyes and a gaping maw. A gloved hand holds the head of the base while another holds a can of soda. It's placed into the mouth of the beast with shocking results. Despite being fully decapitated, the creature bites into the can with a fury, seemingly effortlessly crushing it in its jaws. Field researcher Ken Gerhard wonders if this could be some sort of naturally zombified sea creature. So in the animal kingdom, there is a process that's been documented known as cryptobiosis, whereby certain types of marine life have actually been reanimated or brought back to life. Sea monkeys, of course, were tiny brine shrimp that had essentially been dried out, desiccated, that were, for all intents and purposes, dead. But people could reanimate them by introducing seawater. Gerhard is also reminded of a phenomenon among humans called lucid decapitation, wherein the severed head of a person continues to exhibit lifelike qualities. There have been many examples, particularly during the French Revolution. They had the famous device known as the guillotine, which was efficiently designed to chop off people's heads. And there are many stories of disembodied heads that seem to be animated and alive, sometimes minutes after the decapitation. In one famous example in 1905, a French surgeon convinced an inmate sentenced to death to blink as much as he could after the beheading. Once this decapitation occurred, he actually called out the inmate's name, and he claims that this beheaded head actually looked at him as if it recognized its name. So when we consider these cases of lucid decapitation, we certainly could ask, is that what we're seeing here, an example of this particular phenomenon? Fortunately, we don't decapitate people these days, so there's not much recent data to study regarding headless humans. But there seems to be ample evidence of some kind of life after death, at least physical activity, if not consciousness. This biting fish head is a fascinating specimen. Let's see what our experts make of it. Wildlife biologist Stephanie Shuttler addresses our zombie concerns. There's no cases in nature of back from the dead zombification, but there are things in nature that happen that resembles zombie behavior. In fact, it's more common than you think. Tropically transmitted parasites like Euoplorchis californiensis hijack their host's nervous systems, turning these fish into zombies so the parasites can hop from one host to another. It changes their brain chemistry to make them want to go to the surface of the water where it's dangerous and flash around so that they get noticed by predators, specifically birds, and get eaten up. But Shuttler doubts that's what's happening. I don't think what we're seeing here is due to parasites because the parasite is not benefiting at all. The fish being dead doesn't help the parasite at all. So could this instead be an example of lucid decapitation? Marine biologist Shea Conger weighs in. When an animal dies like this, there's a number of things still going on that don't immediately stop. And one of those is blood flow. So blood carries oxygen to different tissues of the body for some period of time. The brain is really reliant upon oxygen to function. Because this is a sea creature, we can assume it's cold-blooded, which means it requires less oxygen than mammals. So a bodiless fish can continue to use up that remaining oxygen for a longer period of time. 
In the case of animals that are recently deceased, there is something called a cadaveric spasm, which is when you still have some electrical potential in your nerve cells, meaning that there's still some kind of ionic charge between the nerves that can fire back and forth. What I see here is a typical face of a mature wolf eel. They have very strong jaws, and what's happening is that nerves are just being triggered. This doesn't mean that the animal is alive. This phenomenon has been caught on camera numerous times. So while we're looking at a fish, it's not a fluke. Our verdict, this is a decapitated wolf eel displaying some kind of muscle spasm. A natural occurrence, if you can believe it, albeit a disturbing one. This is the Barents Sea, located between Russia and the North Pole. It's one of the most remote and unexplored places on Earth. And one deep sea fisherman there has brought creatures to the surface that are so bizarre, his Instagram account has made headlines. Fish with bulging lips, what looks like human dentures, and fluorescent red-colored eyes. Creatures with heads shaped like aliens. The images are so bizarre, and there are so many of them. Journalist MJ Benayas, who covers the unexplained, says it's made people wonder if there's something unnatural going on below. These creatures look so bizarre that people naturally question something's wrong. One theory is that these aren't natural animals, but rather the product of some sort of bizarre mutation. Look again for yourself. Mutation seems like a reasonable explanation for this. And it turns out the idea of mutated Russian fish may not be far-fetched, as our military expert Tim McMillan explains. Any government that has any kind of nuclear proliferation program has always had this problem of how do you get rid of your waste? And for a number of years, the Soviet Union's uh, answer was dumping it into the Barents Sea. 17,000 nuclear containers, multiple different nuclear-powered ships were sunk, and an entire nuclear submarine. From a period of about the 1950s until the collapse of the Soviet Union. Whoa. So the Soviets used the Barents Sea as a nuclear toilet bowl for decades. And as our physicist, Dr. Hakim Olushei explains, radiation and DNA don't mix. Radiation is really tiny subatomic particles that are flying along. And when they encounter a DNA molecule, they can strike it and break it and change it. So when DNA is subject to radiation, then what happens is the instructions for writing a new animal are changed. So you could end up with anything virtually. A recent scientific study found that a Soviet nuclear submarine at the bottom of the Barents Sea was nearly a million times more radioactive than previously estimated. So are these freaky fish the result of all that dumping? Our marine biologist, Dr. Shea Conger, looks for answers. Conger looks first at the fish's shape and scales. If these fish were impacted by radiation, we would expect to see strange bumps or protrusions on different parts of the body. But I don't see any signs of radiation sickness or poisoning throughout this animal. Its epidermal tissue actually seems to be pretty intact. OK, so Conger says these fish aren't the victims of a nuclear waste dump. But then what else could explain some of these bizarre features? Conger has a theory. They undergo a process of what we call barometric trauma. It turns out that some of these fish have the bends. When human divers come up too quickly from the deep, the change in pressure causes the gases in their body to expand. Well, same for fish. Often these fish will come to the surface with their stomach sticking out of their mouth because of the extreme pressure of having the gases within their body tissues expand at such a quick rate. But there's got to be more to this fish story, right? Conger says the real story was millions of years in the making. Each species on Earth has a very predictable and well-defined evolutionary pathway that makes it what it is today. These animals aren't alien. They're just adapted to an extremely different environment than we're used to. The jury is still out about the long-term effects this contamination will have on marine species. Dr. Conger cautions that the impact could take decades to be fully felt. 
For us, natural evolution and the bends explain these weird looking fish. So our verdict, this is a non-nuclear phenomenon. It's May 2017 in Indonesia's Maluku province. Locals are heading out to work when they make a gigantic, gruesome discovery floating in the water. Cell phone video shows them examining the rotting corpse of a 50-foot dead sea creature that has somehow washed ashore. Here's a look from another angle. The formless blob is not only immense, it looks like it's coated in some sort of white, shaggy hair. What kind of animal has hair like that? It seems like it's something that shouldn't exist. And in fact, if this animal were terrestrial, it wouldn't be able to exist because of its sheer body mass. Folklore is chock full of legendary sea creatures as big as this carcass. The ancient Hebrew Leviathan, the Jormungandr of Norse mythology, and the Kraken, a kind of giant octopus, so big it was described as a floating island in Viking eyewitness accounts. Oh man, I bet that stinks there. But field researcher Cliff Barrickman says these carcasses have their own name. Globsters. Globsters are cool in every way. It's part blob, it's part glob, it's part lobster. I mean, how awesome is that? Globsters have been turning up on shores around the globe for years. This one, known as the Cherbourg carcass, was discovered in France in 1934. But what to make of this one? Globsters have also washed up on beaches in Florida, New Zealand, Bermuda, Canada, and South Africa. But they've never been spotted in the water alive. So what exactly are we looking at here? Let's turn to our analysts. Wildlife biologist Lucy Eckersley first focuses on that amorphous mass of tissue. I think these could be mistaken for lots of different sea animals. And because they look kind of squishy, you might think that they look like a giant octopus or a giant squid. A giant squid? But look. We can see some exposed bone. This video clearly shows this creature has a spine, so it can't be an invertebrate. Next question, what to make of that hair? What looks like hair across this creature is actually fibers of collagen. Marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger says that collagen a protein that provides structure to skin, bones, and tendons is the biggest clue. When components of the body begin to break down, the collagen begins to emerge. And because collagen doesn't break down as quickly as other tissues, these globsters can start to take on a hairy appearance that you wouldn't expect or be able to explain if you weren't familiar. So what was this before the sea decomposed it into a globster? This is actually pretty typical of what I would expect to see in regards to the carcass of a large whale. You can see some striations on the bottom of this object, and that is what we would expect to see in the mouth cavity of a large whale, such as a blue whale. And Conger should know. As you can see, she's been up close and personal with globsters herself. To witness firsthand one of these animals at close distance to the human mind is almost unsurmountable. You're looking at the scale of an animal that's bigger than anything that's ever lived on the planet. And so to unpracticed eyes, they seem absolutely impossible. Ultimately, this story is about the power of the sea. In this case, it's power to transform the bodies of dead animals into something unrecognizable. And once that hair was explained to us, it became clear. Our verdict, the globster is not the kraken or a sea monster. It's a dead whale. November 7th, 2019, Miao Village in Kunming, China. A visitor is wandering through a park near Kue Lake when she takes this video. The footage shows a fish, but there's something more here. There are two dark dots that look like human eyes, two vertical lines which resemble the sides of a nose, and one horizontal one underneath where a man's mouth would be. It's uncanny. Take another look as we zoom in. What I'm seeing is obviously a large fish, but as it swims closer to the camera, it appears to have a human-like face. Where you can actually make out what appear to be eyes, uh, a pronounced nose. This is really creepy and disturbing. 
Field researcher Ken Gerhardt speaks of this fish's resemblance to a local legend. Dragon's Gate represents one of the most famous Chinese legends. The story describes a carp in China's Yangtze River, which began to swim upstream, slowly mutating as it went. And when this carp finally reached the head of the Yangtze River, the gods rewarded it by transforming it into a golden dragon. In modern depictions of Chinese dragons, we often see these large scales, which is almost a tribute to this carp fish. Perhaps this carp or this koi type of fish is in the process of transforming into one of these golden dragons. Gerhardt explores another possibility, that this creature could be the result of covert government activity. There have been many theories that China have been conducting experimentation with marine animals. You have examples of porpoises and seals that have been trained for military use. Perhaps they are somehow trying to manipulate the genetic makeup of different types of aquatic animals. Is this ringing any bells? It certainly reminded our team of something, the human-faced shark we previously investigated. We decided that was a birth defect caused by pollution in the ocean. So what exactly is going on in the waters of China? We'll turn it over to our experts to decide. Biologist Dr. Floyd Hayes mulls the theory that the Chinese government might be trying to mutate fish with other species. There have been cases of fish undergoing gene editing techniques that resulted in the development of limbs with bones, joints, and musculature. But Hayes says the morphology of this fish, particularly the dorsal spines and the large, thick scales, are in line with what we'd expect from a normal carp. I haven't seen any evidence that it has been mutated with any kind of other animal, such as a reptile or a mammal. Next, marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger weighs in on how the fish got this way. She compares the phenomenon in this video to our previous case involving that bizarre shark. The human face shark had really severe developmental defects. What I see here doesn't seem to have any structural issues. Because fish hatch from eggs, it really is survival of the fittest. And for an animal to get this size, it would have to be very healthy. And what we see here are really distinct markings, but I don't see anything biologically wrong with this fish. What we see appears to be a really healthy live carp. We always have to consider the phenomenon of pareidolia, the tendency of the human brain to perceive meaningful images, especially faces, and random objects like clouds and even electrical outlets. But Conger says this isn't just our minds playing tricks on us. The key here is that the carp is known as a plastic species, with a marked tendency to produce varieties and races in response to selective breeding and environmental influences. Conger says those markings are no coincidence. There have been other cases of carp that looked like a human face. Having markings is a really common technique that we call mimicry. And why would a fish want to look like a human? It's all about survival of the fittest. Having marks that look like eyes is a really disconcerting thing for a predator. Because in that split second where the predator has to decide if it's going to go after a prey item or not, having something that causes a little bit of uncertainty is advantageous. Our verdict? Adaptive marking patterns. Yes! This species of carp has developed these strange features over time to help it survive in its environment. And this specimen just happens to be exceptionally well adapted. August 10th, 2019, in Tymouth, United Kingdom, a small seaside town in Northeast England. A local man enjoys a morning coffee on a pier overlooking the water when he spots this. We see a creature in the water dark, skinny, and wiry of indeterminate length. It lurks just beneath the surface in the shallows, hovering in place and almost submerged. But then it breaks the surface and reveals a long, smooth body. Its shape is reminiscent of a snake, and then it goes back under and disappears. Field researcher Ken Gerhardt helps make sense of what we just saw. What's exciting is that I can't readily identify what type of animal this is. One intriguing possibility is that there could be a form of quote unquote underwater alien. And this is born by an ex ocean ex researcher who does underwater exploration who claims to have encountered alien like creatures in the ocean that he described as hyper advanced. But 
Physiologically speaking, he said that they somewhat resembled stingrays or manta rays with wing-like appendages. Next, Gerhard wonders if this might be a saltwater cousin of a local freshwater legend. Still others have hypothesized that this could be Bonessi, which is England's most famous aquatic denizen. Bonessi has been reported from Lake Windermere, the largest lake in England. It's described like a serpentine animal, but very large. Reports of Bonessi only date back to about 2010 or so, when it was first observed by a reporter. And since that time, there have only been about 10 sightings or accounts of Bonessi. But still, we have to recognize that there is a long history of lake monsters throughout the British Isles. Bonessi, like its legendary cousin, the Loch Ness Monster, is thought by many to be a plesiosaurus, which were believed to live exclusively in the oceans until July 28, 2022, when an international team of researchers discovered plesiosaur fossils in ancient freshwater riverbeds in Morocco. So is it possible that a plesiosaur could be making its way from Lake Windermere to the ocean? In addition to aliens that resemble stingrays, underwater photographer Luis Lamar has described giant underwater spiders and poison deep water sea snakes with bright yellow heads. Such figures are referred to as USOs, or unidentified submerged objects. Could this be one of the alien creatures from Lamar's accounts? Let's ask our experts. Wildlife biologist Stephanie Shuttler weighs the possibility that we're looking at one of Britain's famed water monsters. People think that this is Bonessi, or some type of lake monster, by the way that it's moving. It seems to be going in and out of the water, and these things fit what a lake monster would look like. But Shuttler's more skeptical. I wouldn't say it's really characteristic of an animal. Usually animals move faster, especially at the end. They don't bob up and down like that. When the end parts of it come up and down, they look like 90 degree edges. And I can't think of any animal that fits that description. Next, marine biologist Shea Conger discusses the possibility that this is a creature from another planet. It's been conjectured based on some witnesses that this might be an extraterrestrial, but this to me looks like a really normal object. It's in pretty shallow water, so it doesn't seem like there's anything particularly mysterious about it. It does seem like it's moving pretty dynamically in the water, and that could either point to the fact that this is something that's alive, or it's just something that's really flexible and catching the incoming tide and currents as they come in. Based on the fact that this object is not really making any advanced or directed movements, I can pretty much rule out that this is some kind of alien or extraterrestrial creature. But even though she doesn't believe this figure is an alien, Conker still thinks the evidence points towards something strange and unexpected. It's not navigating its environment, it's just waving a lot. Hydrologically, if this were an animal, you would see something like a wake or disturbance at the surface. So because of that, I don't think this is a living, self-propelled item. I believe this is probably some sort of plastic or other type of debris that's being moved around in the water. Conger points out that more than 10 million tons of plastic waste enter the oceans each year. And between the angular shape of the object, the lack of a wake and its dark, reflective nature, all signs point to this being a large piece of plastic floating in the current. The verdict? This is just some floating debris. We didn't spot Bo Nessie this time, but rest assured we will keep a keen eye out for more sightings in Tynemouth.